In the kingdom of Longtrellis, the king and queen watch a circus performance, although the queen appears uninterested. The queen is upset and runs to her room to cry after one of the performers reveals she is pregnant. Since she has not been able to conceive, the king rushes after her to comfort her and apologizes for not knowing the artist was pregnant, otherwise, he would not have allowed her in the castle. Later, a necromancer offers a remedy to the royals but warns that bringing life requires someone else's death to maintain balance. The queen agrees to the necromancer's terms, which include killing a sea monster in the lake and extracting its heart. The heart must then be boiled by a pure virgin girl in secret. The queen must eat the heart to become pregnant. When they arrive at the lake, the king dons diving gear and dives underwater, discovering a large white creature sleeping. He slowly approaches the monster and pierces its body with a spear, causing it to cry in anguish and thrash around. During the struggle, the king is struck by the creature's tail, resulting in his death due to poor vision. After retrieving both bodies from the lake, the queen ignores her husband's death and instead waits for the guards to fetch the beast's heart before leaving with it. Upon returning to the castle, they discover a pure servant among the servants and leave her alone with a heart. When she throws it into boiling water, she notices an odd sensation in her belly, indicating that she is becoming pregnant. The queen quickly devours the cooked heart and becomes pregnant. Both ladies give birth to healthy twin boys that night. After the king's death, a large funeral is prepared, but the queen is more concerned with her son. Sixteen years later, the queen's son Elias has matured into a vibrant teenager with unusual white hair. To avoid the queen's attention, he sneaks around the castle's maze until she becomes lost. Elias encounters Johan, the servant's son who resembles him. It's as if they were twins birthed from lake creatures. The guys like spending time together, particularly swimming in the lake, where they can stay underwater for extended periods. Unfortunately, the castle guards often find and separate them, the queen is concerned about her son's relationship with a peasant and threatens Johan's mother with banishment if they are caught together again. Elias asks her mother not to disturb Johan or his family because he's like a brother to him. However, this enrages the queen, who orders her son not to associate with Johan again. Obviously, Elias disobeys her and continues to meet Johan in secret. One day, the queen notices her son passing by and summons him to ask a question. During their conversation, she senses something unusual about the boy's fragrance. After he leaves, she secretly follows him to Elias' room and realizes she had spoken with Johan. The guys are overjoyed that no one can tell them apart and see themselves governing the kingdom together. Johan even contemplates giving his mother a noble title and her own castle. When the queen knocks on the door, Johan hurriedly hides and Elias invites her in. A jealous queen informs her son that no one would ever love him as much as she does, indicating her unwillingness to share him with others. After she goes, Elias leads Johan to a secret path through the slaughterhouse to return to town. Johan is ambushed from behind and realizes the queen has planned to assassinate him. Johan struggles to avoid her strikes, but escapes by hiding amid the meat. After an incident, Johan realizes he is not secure in the city and leaves to protect his family. From the castle, Elias notices Johan departing and rushes out to stop him, but Johan refuses to remain. He acknowledges Elias' concerns and provides him with a comforting gift. After piercing the trunk of an ancient tree, Johan instructs Elias to visit the brook daily. Clear water indicates safety, whereas muddy water indicates peril. After Johan's departure, Elias monitors the water daily to prevent contamination from other children. After discovering the river has become gory red, he immediately leaves on horseback to find his friend. When the queen learns of Elias' escape, she sends a search team far into the woods, but no one finds him. After a few days, Elias arrives in a tiny village and is mistaken for Johan, prompting everyone to hug him. He disappeared after going to the woods a few days ago. The queen accepts the necromancer's offer to bring her son back in exchange for a sacrifice, without further details. Elias wanders into the woods in pursuit of Johan, who is actually down a precipice. He fell a few days ago and injured his leg, so now he's locked there. He responds to Elias' call, but Elias is unable to hear him. Instead, he attracts the attention of a terrifying monster who attempts to attack him. Johan, terrified, tries to hide within a cave hole, but the monster worsens his injury. Elias appears and causes the creature to freeze, allowing him to stab it with his dagger. Elias guides Johan out of the cave and returns him to his new life in the small town. Meanwhile, the creature morphs and reveals itself as the queen. In the kingdom of Strongcliff, the king is notorious for his promiscuous lifestyle. Despite being surrounded by women who fulfill his wants, he has yet to find a true queen. One day, he hears a beautiful voice singing a lovely tune. When the king glances out the window, he notices a peasant woman in the distance. However, when he calls her over, she quickly returns to her home. The king is intrigued by the mystery and sends a servant to the woman's residence to present her with a valuable jewelry. When the servant arrives, the woman refuses to leave her house, so a bucket is shoved through the window to receive the present. 
After the man leaves, the woman is revealed to be Dora, who lives with her sister Ima. Due to their age and appearance, they prefer to stay indoors. The sisters are astonished to see the necklace and Ima suggests returning it, but Dora keeps it since it makes her feel lovely. Later that evening, the king approaches the woman with a beautiful voice and offers her a reward for doing the nasty work. Ima suggests dismissing him, but Dora values the opportunity to improve her life. She doesn't want the king to see her like this, so she tells him to come back in a week and she'll reveal her finger. The king is desperate enough to agree. Dora attempts to improve the appearance of her wrinkled finger by putting it in hot wax, but the result is only worse. Dora panics and grabs Ima's hand, recognizing its smoother texture due to her habit of sucking her fingers. She pulls her sister to the door to offer the finger to the king, who kisses it and requests for more. Dora agrees to give him more, but only on one condition. She will visit him in the castle at night, and he must wait without lighting any candles. In despair, the king rushes to the castle and orders the attendants to extinguish all candles. Dora instructs Ima to conceal her wrinkles behind her back in order to appear younger in the dark. Dora enters the castle and lies down on the king's bed under the blankets to hide her body. The king soon joins her, and they spend the next several hours getting down to business. After Dora falls asleep, the king lights a lamp to see her. He is appalled to see an unattractive, wrinkled woman. Dora is thrown out of the window by the guards after he accuses her of being a witch and manipulating him. Fortunately, she is still wrapped in blankets, which get trapped in a tree and prevent her from hitting the ground. A wandering witch finds a hanging Dora and helps her down, giggling. She observes her sorrowful expression and comforts her by breastfeeding. Dora's body begins to shift when the witch leaves, resulting in smoother skin and longer, red hair, changing her into a stunning young woman. Dora is shocked by her new form as the king and his troops chase a boar in the woods. However, he becomes distracted and falls in love with Dora. Later, a castle worker visits Ima's house with a lovely attire and an invitation to the royal wedding. Dora wants her sister to attend her marriage to the king. Dora takes Ima into another room to explain what occurred and promises a better life for her once she becomes queen. After the party, Ima refuses to go as she feels lonely without her sister. Ima observes a busy married couple, but the king misidentifies her as the old lady from the previous day and orders her to leave. Princess Violet is playing a beautiful song for her father, the king, but he gets distracted by a flea on his arm. The king is pleased by the bug's antics and keeps a watch on it until he catches it. After Violet is finished, the king takes the flea to his chambers and starts keeping it as a pet. It grows gigantic under his care. The king summons the court doctor to his chambers one night to treat a flea that has grown to the size of a horse but is unwell. Despite his fear, the doctor reports to the king that the flea has perished. When it dies, the king decides to skin it. His daughter Violet tells him she wants to be married, so he offers her as a bride to whoever can guess from what beast the skin was taken, believing no one can do so. Despite their best efforts, no one in the throne room can fathom that such a large piece of skin could be from an insect. A ferocious ogre uses his nose to identify flea-infested skin. Everyone is shocked, and the king has no choice but to follow his promises. Violet goes through with the marriage but says her father never loved her. The ogre takes Violet to his cave, where she is raped and kept prisoner. Days pass, and Violet remains filthy and miserable. One morning, she approaches a woman harvesting herbs on the other cliff and requests assistance. Although the woman cannot provide assistance from a distance, she vows to return with support. Later, a man throws a rope to bridge the gap between cliffs and walks on it like an acrobat, the ogre runs after them, using his hands to move up the rope. The acrobat moves quickly and securely reaches the opposite side with Violet. The family then cuts the rope and the ogre falls. Violet is taken away by her family in a carriage, where she can laugh at their tricks. Unfortunately, the monster survives and attacks the family by getting inside the carriage. Violet, grabs a knife from a basket and escapes with the others. Furious, the ogre chases and approaches by following his nose. One of the artists sips some alcohol before breathing flames over the ogre's face. Unfortunately, the ogre attacks again and quickly kills. He is mollified by Violet, who then slits his throat. Violet returns to the castle, where the king has grown ill and reveals she has the head of the ogre, the husband he chose for her. The king falls to his knees crying and the courtiers follow suit. Violet, too, begins to cry. As Violet's father walks her to the throne the crowd looks skyward, where an entertainer is walking a tightrope of fire. We see Dora's beauty begin to fade and, unnoticed, she flees the castle. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.